so how you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching my YouTube channel, so thanks a lot for that. So let me tell you, let me start off with this. Uh, you may notice that I haven't done a lot of bird videos, right? And I was heading back towards the car, and it was well after sunset. It's pretty dark. And I noticed this dark figure coming out of the woods, right? Of course, being me, I'm going to look. And uh, I noticed he's carrying his backpack kind of strange, right? And then I look closer, and I'm like, no way. I'm like, sir, is that a raptor you're carrying? And he's like, yes, it is. So he's a falconer. One thing led to another. Check this out. This is my friend Ian. I just met him. And as you can see, he's got a hawk. So Ian, good to see you today. Great, great to see you. I'm, I'm excited. So excited. This is a, um, an immature red-tailed hawk. You could tell she's immature because of the, uh, the banded brown tail and the uh, you know, after the uh, year end, she'll uh, she'll molt that out, grow a red one, and um, you know this is a this is a hood. Um, you're probably wondering about that. That's just to keep her calm um, before we go out and try to catch stuff. Oh wow! So do you have to keep that on her? You don't have to keep that on her while she's at home. Do you? No, no, no. She has a big facility where she can fly around, and uh, awesome. you know, and then we go hunting. You know, either every day or every other day. Wow. So, so what kind of food does she eat? Um, well, she eats um, either what she catches, and she catches everything, you really? know, everything that she can. She caught bullfrogs, squirrels, crayfish, mice, lots of mice. Wow. She could catch rabbits, and uh, so either that, and then I supplement that with quail and other stuff that I kind of just get. Um, crayfish. So. so she'll go, she can snatch the crayfish right out of the water. Well, this is, this is a one-time thing. Um, red tails are very opportunistic. That's what makes them such um, successful survivors and why you see them everywhere. Wow. So they'll grab a crayfish, they'll grab a bullfrog, they'll, you know, whatever they can grab. That's awesome. Get out of here. That's too <laughs> cool. Yep. That's awesome. I didn't know that. So what's her name, by the way? Yeah, does so she have a name? She does have a name. I call her Event Horizon. If you, Most people awesome. don't understand what that name is, but an Event Horizon is like the um, area around a black hole where light can't escape. How cool is that? I thought it was pretty cool. That's an awesome name. <laughs> yeah. That's a really cool so. name. And how much does she weigh? Ian was telling me earlier that he had to check with the uh, wind velocity for obvious reasons and her weight. But uh, I'd like to know what's your what's your... so right now she's eleven thirty eight grams. So wow. she's um, a little over a kilogram. She's a small female. Um, they could get to as much as two kilograms. Um, you're even exceeding that um, potentially. Uh, but you know uh, the the weight's important because you know if red tails are too heavy or you know, if they're too heavy, they're going to kind of be more prone to just still hunting, just waiting for something to happen. Really? Um, and if they're too light, then that could be sort of dangerous for their health. Wow. Um, so this, at her weight right now, I'm hoping that she's going to be proactively trying to hunt and kind of actively, um, you know, following and, uh, you know, participating in the hunt. Wow. That's pretty neat. Yep. So does that also vector into or factor into wind velocity? Do you have to do that every day? Um, you, you mean like the side her weight? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I weigh her at least um, two, three, sometimes four times a day. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so that definitely is something that I keep a log of every single um, weight she was at every single day that I've had her. Holy cow. Yeah. So talk about responsibility, guys. That's a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. How do you, um, how is it that you're allowed to do this? Is, do you have so, to have any yes. special permits? This is a, um, yeah, you need, it's very regulated. There's only 30 falconers in New Jersey. Um, and, uh, you know, there's more in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure how many, but, um, you need to get a license. You need to pass a test. You need to get sponsored for two years by, um, a master or general class falconer, um, and, uh, build the facilities, get them approved by the state. Okay. And that's just to get the license. And then you need to find one, which can be hard. Or I can imagine. Be easy. Are you allowed to have more than one? Are you allowed to sponsor more than one person at a time? Um, I believe you can. Um, uh, not too many though, cause it takes so much time. Most people, it's hard to convince them to sponsor one person. What made you decide to do this? Uh, well, my dad... Besides it being awesome. I mean. It was kind of, you know, uh, my just dad told me that it existed, and then it just was like, yeah, I'm doing this, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I got into it when I was a freshman in the high school. Really? Uh, now I'm a senior, uh, yeah. about to go away to college. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully I could do it through college and on. How so, cool is that? Yeah. Awesome. So it's people like this that... Bring us half our knowledge, just like the snake keepers. Half the knowledge we have on herpetology comes from the people who breed and raise them and do the husbandry. So it's people like Ian 
that bring us a lot of knowledge we have and the protection and awareness of birds such as Event Horizon. <laughs> so, that's an awesome name. <laughs> yeah, so uh, even the Peregrine Fund, I don't know if you heard about that. That was um, almost entirely falcon. It was started by Tom Cade, who was a falconer at Cornell. Oh, cool. Um, and a lot of the peregrines that were brought into the breeding program were from falconers. And wow. now there's peregrines that you could see. I saw one right on my road. So Really? Yep. See? So <laughs> if it wasn't for them, you know, they're another soldier of the fight for protecting the environment and nature itself, you know? This is what saves our future resources for our generations to come. So, awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to um, shortly be uh, unhooding her, throwing her up into one of these trees, and uh, you know, then we're going to go and try to catch some stuff. Okay, Ian's going to de-hood her now and turn her loose. There you go, she's ready to take it off. All right. There goes the hood. Hey, how are you doing? And also, this is good because she sees you. If she doesn't see you in the beginning, that's not good. Oh, ah, okay. I learned this from my dog the hard way. If she doesn't see my dog in the beginning, she'll go after him. Really? Yeah. So. Even if it's a big dog? Um, well, my dog isn't big, so I don't know. But uh, Neither is mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm about to cast her right now. So okay. Here she goes. Great. All right. We're off. And what's the bell for? Is that so that you can tell where she is? Yeah, because it's hard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She, she just disappears, guys. You can barely see her as it is. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm following you, so. All right. There you see the um, resident. Now, is that okay? Yeah. The resident's not going to be happy about it. It's hard to find a spot that doesn't happen. Right. Okay. Um, now, does she follow you? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love living things. All living things. I really care about nature and animals and people and stuff, right? But I do believe in hunting. And event as you know is a red tail hawk she needs she's a meat eater this is how you get her food okay so we're going to be hunting primarily for squirrels but we you know would capitalize on rabbits and mice and whatever else she gets oh yeah lots of sign now another yeah, she probably saw something there. Okay. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of those. Okay. It's a game flight right now. Me, she spotted game. I'm gonna try to call her down to the fish just to make sure that she's not bumping to the eel. So, um, you can somewhat near me. Okay. Yes, she can come. Awesome. How cool is that? <laughs> that must have been a good shot. Yeah, man. She is awesome. Alright, uh, let's just keep on going down that way, see what we can find. Oh, oh Cooper talk. See that? Yep. Uh, we need to call it for the board real quick. Okay. Awesome. That was cool. That's awesome. I had no idea where she was. <laughs> She's so well trained. And once she gets into those thermals though, all bets are off. Really? Yeah, she could easily just open her wings and be in the next state. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty intimidating when she gets that high. Yeah.
so Evie, which is what I'm calling her, has a transmitter. And now he's using it to track her down in case she has a squirrel. He doesn't want to alarm her or stress her. And this is the more passive way of tracking her down if she does have a squirrel. Now, in case you're wondering about the impact that falconry has on the environment, it's actually really positive. Falconers, as you might know, do breed their birds of prey. Not always, but they do breed them. They help increase the population. As you know, the populations are diminishing due to natural reasons, of course, and human-related reasons such as power lines and uh, road kills, pollutions, hunters, things like that. So, and also, their health is closely monitored. So it actually increases their success rate and decreases their mortality rate. That's actually pretty cool. So these are healthier birds being re-released into the population, into the environment, replenishing that population that's already decreasing. So it's a good thing. And it helps reduce the numbers of some of the animals that aren't in check anymore because there's no coyotes. There's not as many coyotes and foxes and things to hunt them, including other birds of prey. So this helps keep them in check also. I gotta get back to what I'm doing. Like, Because uh, when we look through a binocular, our field of vision is cut down. Yes. So with them, they have the same field of vision, but it's just more vivid. So, so it's the detail and sharpness? Right, so, Cool. You know, imagine if you could see an atom, you know? Yeah. It's like without a telescope, you just see it. You have more capacity to see detail. That's amazing. I know birds can see in slow motion because uh -huh. uh, their brains are faster. So it allows them to actually dodge rubble like when they're um, demolishing buildings or uh -huh. a kid throws a stone at the bird. The bird sees it move through the air slowly. Uh -huh. How long have you had her? Um, I got her in middle of September. Oh wow! Yeah. So, and you've trained her since then. Yep. Holy so she was cow! Wild and now she's catching stuff. You would me. never know. I would never know. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. You guys seem so in tune. Yeah, she's a good bird. Yeah, she is. You've done an amazing job. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. All right, Gus. Awesome. Yeah. Go in, start your play. So, our goal right now is to flush game. That's what we're trying to do. And she watches us like a hawk. And if any game is flushed out, she's on it. But you gotta shout, ho, ho, ho. And that's the, uh, that's the mission call. That means there's game, and she'll be all about it. Here uh -oh. she comes. Okay. You want to get somewhere close? Yeah, you tell me. It's fine. Okay, he's in this tree now. He's in this tree. This tree. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. He's going down. He's going down. Anything happened yet? No. We're also there. He's got to be. I haven't seen him go down or anything. Oh, oh. I can hear him on the tree. I can hear him. I can't see him. He's coming down the trunk. Shake it. He's on He's on this side. Keep going. Shake it. He's total opposite of event. Oh, she just missed him. She just missed him. He's still in the tree. Around there. Yep. He's right up there. He's uh, on the opposite side of the trunk now. His head's facing down. He's about th three quarters of the way up. He's coming down, he's coming down. Oh crap, where? She's right beside him, dude. When the, steel, the chase goes stagnant like this. Don't go away yet. Fine then. Uh -oh. oh, he's about to go down, I think. Oh, 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 there's. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, you see the bird trying to flush it? Yep. I didn't even know birds did that. <laughs> oh my god. They're like a foot apart. 
squirrels are ever so cunning. Ah, oh, oh! oh, she just missed him. He's right at your feet. Did she miss? Holy crap, are you serious? Yes. Are you serious? Oh, mouse. Look at that. You see, you <laughs> rest of the mouse for me. Second one today. <laughs> Not quite the squirrel I was looking for, but you know. She's right on it. <laughs> well, good job. Good job, baby. That's beautiful, though. She's gorgeous. You'll be really impressed when she gets her uh, adult colors. Now, at that point, do you have to let her go? No, you can keep her. Um, like I kept my first bird for two years. This isn't your first? No, it's my third. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So what happens when, because uh, I know when I first met you, uh -huh. or at some point, uh -huh. you were saying uh, how you do like this release thing. You have them for a while, and then you release them? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you get them, uh, you trap them as juveniles where they're, you know, they're hunting on their own. Um, you know, not in independent from the parents. Uh, and then, you know, either, you know, after the first season or the second or third or fourth or however long you keep them, um, then you release them. Um, they go completely back to being wild. Awesome. So That's cool. So they, they adapt straight to it. Yeah, they make I mean, the transition wild well. Hawks. I mean, really, she's a wild hawk right now. She's just taking advantage of humans, which wild hawks in the wild do all do the, the same thing. Yeah. Like you're telling me about the Cooper's hawks. Yeah. That, you know, flew, uh, you know, with a car. That's awesome. Yeah, the uh, Mongolians have something like that too going on. Yeah. You know, they start when they're four years old. Yep, yep. Yeah, so. Those are incredible people. Yeah. So we uh, rustled that squirrel nest, little one. And uh, obviously there was no squirrel in it. But a field mouse had fled the nest. And the vent was right on it. So you saw that. There's another red tail right down there, heading towards a vent. But you can see, these two have a bond. He's only been doing this a couple months with her. And look how well they've uh, learned to anticipate each other's movements. It's just amazing. They've just been together for a couple months. I'll never get over it. I mean, they hunt as one. In doing so, I've done a lot of stuff with people. You really feel like you're connected when you're doing this. And I've only known her for part of a day. And it's amazing, amazing stuff. So, uh, you really feel part of the environment when you're doing it this way. Oh, she got, she got one, she got one. Around here. We're going to go around, stay around, try to flush it back towards her. Where do you want me to go? Oh, let's go, let's go. She got it. No, I don't think she did. Oh, really? That was a cool flight, though. Yeah, it was. All right, get back up, try again. Okay, you want me to go back this way and around? I'm trying to think where the rabbit would have gone. Probably right into here. There's a stream right here. All right, I'm going to cover. Cast it right back into that tree. Okay. Ready? Go, girl. Higher pitch than that. Come on. There she sees. Yeah. A crayfish. That's awesome. Not exactly a rabbit or a squirrel, but you know. That's awesome, though. She's up in the tree and she spots herself a crayfish in this water with those reflections. Do they have polarized vision? I'm not sure exactly. I bet they do. I mean, I think they don't hunt much in the water, so but I probably eagles do. Well, wait a minute. They do have polarized vision. All birds do, because uh, when you let one go in the city, 
no, even if it hasn't been there before, when it looks up, it sees the solar waves. Uh -huh. It can always tell what direction's north, no matter where it is on the planet. It literally sees dark waves moving through the sky. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. So that's how they navigate. Yeah, that and lands and uh, landmarks. Huh. All right, girl, let's go. So we try to flush Cory out for prey. Try to what? Okay. She keeps her eyes on both of us. And she's an amazing sentry. She spots prey very well. I mean, the way she spotted that crayfish. Shut that drink. Okay, so stand here, big head. Oh, oh. Stay here? Yeah, stay there, stay there. Okay. Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Oh, there she is! Oh! 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 Uh, yeah, she's close between me and you, and the squirrel's almost above your head. Back in the tree that you were under. She's not looking at it anymore, though. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. All right, all right, now. See if she turns around. She turned around. She's looking at you. It is. It's at the top of the tree, the very top of this there tree. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Oh, 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 oh. Where's she? Where's she? She's right here. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. This is crazy. All right, she's here. If the squirrel's still, yeah, I see her. And there's a squirrel in this tree behind you. Right there, right oh, there. Oh. Let's go down the tree. Okay, she's like five and a half feet above him. The squirrel is? Uh, she is about five feet above the squirrel. The squirrel's on the other side of the tree from you. He's going down the tree. He's going down the tree. Okay, he's coming back this way. He's in, okay, he's on the ground right here, right here. Oh, there's one over here too. He's under, holy crap. So I guess there was two of them. Got it, got it. She got it? We got a squirrel. Wow. So there's two squirrels all along. Ah. Ah. Wow! Oh, that was the best fight I've ever seen. Crazy. That was oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I, I gotta show you where she caught this thing. Oh my god! Oh. Hey, you want to know something? Uh, yeah, what's up? It's my birthday today. Are you serious? Yep, the best present I got. Happy birthday, man. Look at this bird. Now it's okay if I come close, right? It's not gonna mess with her? Um, like I'm behind you right now. now. I don't even see her. Uh, oh. She was down a hole. Oh, Are I you serious? I can see the bird. Holy crap, dude. That wow. was, oh my God. Oh my God. You know, I've had one of the rabbits that she caught, I, I ate. Awesome. And it was one of the most delicious meals. It was Kentucky Fried Rabbit. That sounds amazing. It was. So you guys just saw what goes into this. Okay, a lot of effort, a lot of flushing and stuff like that. And you see, I mean, it's like watching a battle. You know, watch them go back and forth and all that. She actually shot down through all this thickness that we could barely fit a foot through. She went through that after the squirrel and was down a hole. He had to pull her out of the hole, but she had her catch. She got the squirrel. So that's a huntress if there ever was one. Look at that. Look at that. She doesn't even want to let go. Oh no. That's the hunt. That's a bunch of styrofoam there. Yeah. That was amazing, man.
Yeah, so now I have more room. I could kind of actually do, do what it is you're trying to do. do. So you could, uh, this is called a trade-off. Okay. Um, you got a squirrel head. You want um, to give her this and get the squirrel. So I'm gonna put both hands, one on the squirrel, one with her right above her feet. All right, so again, once she's ready, which seems to be taking a while, she'll just take the take the rat, uh, the squirrel head. Okay. And now what I have to do, if she's trying to eat it, I have to limp wrist her. So that way she'll put up a foot like that. And then I didn't do a good job. You gotta make sure that she doesn't see the squirrel again. Oh, that's gotta be hard sometimes. Yeah, I mean, normally it's not this hard. Okay. But she, again, is wired. And she's gonna get fed a lot, though. She definitely deserved her. Oh, yeah. Her meal. Just not this, because I don't know if you've ever tried to skin a squirrel. Yes. It's not fun. No, no. Rabbits are easy but not squirrels. Yeah, rabbits are like ideal, honestly. I do, I do know with squirrels, it's a lot easier when they're warm than when they're, you know, once they start cooling down, the, the skin sticks more. No, it's good to know, I didn't really know that. Yeah. yeah I'm just gonna let her try to eat it, because okay. quite frankly, she's not gonna be able to. Okay. It takes the hawks in the wild, in order for them to get a squirrel, it takes them hours. Really? To get. Oh yeah. They need to go through either the eye or the butt, and that's okay. Yeah, a lot any of the other way. This is not going to happen. They can't get through the the hide. No. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, that's why. Uh, same thing with turkey vultures. They can't get through deer hides, so they go through the butt. Right. Right. Okay, that's actually neat to know. I didn't know that. I thought they could just slice right through it. No. She is completely disinterested in food right now. She wants to destroy what she just killed. Huh. Kind of like my dog. Here you go, girl. I'll give you lots of food. Just trade off. One of the things that I did, which I probably shouldn't have, was at the end of one of the days, I just let her completely uh, crop up on a squirrel, like on a full, not butchered squirrel. Okay. And uh, I guess she got the idea that uh, she could do that whenever. Oh, that makes sense. I knew this would be a good spot. Or at least I thought it would be. No, I mean, this is great. It had rabbits, it had squirrels. There we go. Now I just let her have it. Awesome. Good job. And once she puts two feet on it, she's like, okay, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. I just turned 18, so. Oh, I'm nice, man. Falconer now. Really? Yep. Very cool. Doesn't really change much. I'm going to still be hunting with a red tail. But it's got to be awesome, though. It's yeah. got to feel good. Yeah. So how much experience, like how, what, what else do you need besides age to be a general? Um, to be a general? Well, you yeah. need to be, obviously have the sponsor um, for a minimum of two years. Okay. Um, for me, it was four. Huh. Um, and then uh, you need the facilities built. Um, you need to have had a X amount of time owning a red tail or whatever bird. Huh. And then once you're a general, you could... Uh, you could get other types of birds, you could get two red tails, although one, you know, <laughs> occupies anyone enough. Sure it does. So, is, are your facilities at home? Yep. Wow. Yep, so she's free lofted, which means she could fly around and oh, cool. exercise all day. If she so chooses, although she pretty much just sits in one spot anyway. Which is a very red tail thing to do. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to call her to the fist. And I'm gonna hood her, and I'm not gonna feed her um, right away. Okay. That's 
for resetting. But okay. Actually, um, what we're going to do, um, I don't even need to tighten the braces because she already reset. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to walk somewhere, get some those trees. I'm going to put her up. Um, I'm going to give her the lure, and then I'm going to feed her from there. Okay. This is just like a field leash to the, you know, like accidentally. It's awesome knowing that, you know, should you ever need it, you've got, you've got a hunting party, you know? <laughs> That's just so cool. Yeah. So cool. Yep. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, I did. <laughs> I definitely did. And uh, if you're ever up for it, I'll be up for uh -huh. future hangouts and stuff. Just like, whenever you want to go out, just call me. Really? I'll never, I'll pretty much never say no. Sounds great, man. So there you have it, guys. That's a taste of falconry. Hope that whets your appetite a little bit. Now, I am so honored to have spent the bulk of the weekend with Ian and Event, his red tail hawk. Amazing stuff. Little did I know that it was Ian's birthday, and he chose to share that birthday with me. He turned 18 while we were out there in the field hunting with event. It's an amazing thing. And uh, I'm so honored for that. Thank you so much, Ian. I'll, I'll never forget this for the rest of my life. My first taste of falconry was with you on your 18th birthday. So he began falconry at the early age of 14. That's pretty young. And I'm pretty sure that there, are, and I'm, I'm sure that there are others who have started at an earlier age, but come on, probably not many. And you can see the bond that he has. Falconry, the way we did it, that art, is a very active form of hunting. You are connected. I feel so connected with the environment doing so and with her. I felt that she was an extension of us. But even more so, I feel that we were an extension of her. It's really cool stuff. It wears you out a bit, but it feels great. Get your heart racing. And just by watching Ian, I see a connection, a form of bond, where if Event's heart rate goes up, his is too. That's what it does to you. I could feel it, and that's not even my bird, okay? It's just really cool. Ian is such a well-spoken person. He's knowledgeable. I can only imagine what he'll be like 10 years from now. Incredible stuff. If anyone's considering perhaps contacting him or hiring him to do a program for a school or something, I definitely encourage that. Perhaps contact me, and I'll, I'll connect you to him. So once again, thank you very much, Ian and Event. I'll never forget this. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, Chris Ignato, signing out. Beautiful.